This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to CWK Live every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I am your host, Dan Z. Thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. What a great community we have. It's so wonderful we get to share Monday nights together talking about one of our favorite things, the Star Wars saga. Again, I'm your host, Dan Z. Thrilled to be here with you all. Uh, Christina, no worries. We will certainly save you a spot. We, um, no problem at all. That's why we have Facebook. YouTube, and Instagram, and of course, on the podcast feed itself. So let's see who is here with us. Nick is here. Hello, Nick. Good to have you, buddy. Terry is back. Terry, back from Galaxy's Edge fairly recently. Looking forward to hearing all about that. Minta says, sorry for my absence. Been busy the past several weeks for my wedding next month and getting a place. Crazy times. Well, Minta, no worries. It's a very exciting time in your life, and we are thrilled for you. Hope you nothing but the best for you and your fiance, oh, many blessings. Great to have you here tonight. Merry Happy Labor Day to you, and Happy Labor Day to everyone. We had a wonderful weekend. Uh, spent it actually in Indianapolis and got to hang out with our friend Ross. And that was a great time. Had breakfast with Ross, so that was great. He says, on his phone until his computer finishes updating. No problem, Ross. We had a great time with you. Mason was thrilled to see you. And he says, hello, Ross, right there. Jamie, hello. Happy Monday to you, my friend. Of course, Mason is here. Hello, Mace. Mason and I went and saw Shang-Chi earlier today, and wow, we're not going to talk about that necessarily tonight on CWK Live unless it comes up in our questions later, but it's going to be fun to talk about and for fun for people to see. Brian, happy Monday to you. Again, hello back to Jamie. Got a great show tonight, everybody. Well, what's on the show? So what is brewing in Star Wars this week? Well, it's been a little bit quiet. I think we're, it's kind of the calm before the exciting storm, the good storm, because we're going to have Star Wars Visions coming out. Thanks again to everybody who listened. Uh, last couple weeks, we talked about top five modes from the Star Wars Visions trailer with my friend Drew Taylor. And then last week, John Alois of the Hyperion Hub and Clayton Sandell joined me, and we talked about Star Wars and nostalgia. And boy, did we have fun. I got a lot of great feedback from all of you, so thank you for that. But basically, it was us reflecting on those moments from when we were kids where we started to fall in love with Star Wars. And there are a lot of great moments, of course, that we can certainly talk about. But speaking of great, fun, exciting moments, I want to talk to you about Star Wars The High Republic Tempest Runner by Kevin Scott. So this is a book this is actually an audiobook exclusive. Hello, Josh. Good to have you back on the show, my friend. And Aaron is here. Aaron, hello. Of course, Star Wars, the host of Star Wars Reactions. Good to see you, my friend. Tempest Runner is an audiobook exclusive. There is no current text version of it. You can only enjoy this canonical story through the wonder of Penguin Random House Audios audiobooks. And this is amazing because when they do these audiobook exclusives, they're done very much like an old school radio program as far as very, very high production value, a ton of sound effects and music and atmosphere, and of course, a huge audio cast. And it is it is great. I was riveted by it. It's only got seven or eight tracks, so I thought, well, this will be shorter, but each track is a, is a good hour, hour and a half long. And it basically takes the place of what happens after the rising storm and race to Crash Point Tower, Crash Point Tower, uh, it's from the perspective of Lorna D. That is who is on the cover. She's one of the Nihil. And she is a force to be reckoned with. And I don't want to spoil anything, but I mean, if you look at the description on Amazon or on Penguin Random House Audio's actual website, you'll see all about this one and basically the angle they are taking. But you learn a lot about Lorna D., what makes her tick, how she got to the Nihil, her upbringing, and then where she is now in the world of Star Wars Our Republic. And it is tremendous. I did not want it to end. 
It was written by Kevin Scott, who, of course, is one of the best in the business at creating amazing narrative with these fictional characters that we know and love so well from Star Wars and from other comics and other franchises as well. But Tempest Runner is one of my favorite stories from the High Republic so far, and because it's produced in the way that it is, with being an audiobook exclusive, with, again, the sound effects, the music, the atmosphere, the top-notch voice cast, cannot recommend it highly enough. Be sure to check that out today. You will not regret it. I listened to it when I was working out, when I was driving, and I absolutely loved it. Andrew is here, and he says, I maybe want to read Light of the Jedi and the Rising Storm again, now that I know her backstory, and I agree with you. I agree with you, Andrew. Speaking of Andrew, Andrew and I, uh, alongside Mark Newbold, earlier recorded the show for this week of Coffee with Kenobi. It's going to be top five things we liked about the Rising Storm, speaking of the High Republic. So a lot of High Republic this week from Coffee with Kenobi. Good times. Speaking of good times, I'm sure you're all have been looking at all this stuff and all the excitement online about the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, the two-night adventure at Walt Disney World. We do not currently know when the first voyage is going to be, but if you want to be added to that interest list, go to starcruiser at mei-travel.com to get a chance to sign up if you want to. Again, this is a no-cost, no-obligation email that you will send. It's just basically you getting your name on the list so that when the time comes, they will contact you and say, hey, uh, there are some spots open, and at least you'll have a chance to do it, because I think it's going to sell out pretty quickly. I guess we'll see, hopefully, uh, sooner rather than later. I can't wait to see what this thing is all about. It certainly, certainly looks very, very promising. Speaking of very promising, let's talk about our main topic for tonight, your top five most from the Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga trailer. We've seen and heard about this game for a long time. Uh, we've had other Star Wars Lego games before, naturally. But this one is going to encompass all nine films in the Skywalker Saga on one game. All in one game. And that's never happened before to this particular degree. And so we're going to have some fun talking about it, for sure. Josh says, speaking of novels, I just finished Thrawn Ascendancy, Greater Good. I know I'm really behind Really good. I wonder what Star Flash is. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, we haven't talked a ton about the Thrawn Ascendancy Trilogy, but I know a lot of people have really liked really liked it. Blake says, I've waited like two years for this game. I'm going to have man tears when it releases. I hear you, dude. Speaking of man tears, let's talk about the wonderful things in this particular top five because there are a lot of cool things to talk about. Some fun things, some exciting things, some crazy things. Good stuff. Uh, I don't know if I said this last week, but uh, major props to... The one and only Corey Club, the co-creator of Coffee with Kenobi. He, of course, does all of our design logos, and he did the new CWK Live logo, which you can see at the top of the screen. And if you like the design, there's a sheet, a sheet, excuse me, there is a shirt for it on www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash shop. I've worn it a couple of times on the live show. I didn't wear it tonight, but that CWK Live logo, great fun. All right, speaking of great fun, let's do this top five favorite moments. Number five for me. Is the graphics and gameplay? Yes, we know it's going to be funny. Yes, we know it's going to be all encompassing of the Skywalker saga. But the graphics on this, when it cuts from the animation sequences to the gameplay itself in this trailer, look tremendous. And we've got stuff with starships. We've got lightsaber duels. We've got some skill challenges. We're using different characters, whether they're force wielders or not. Leia, Janna, all kinds of characters. Rey, Luke. Anakin, Obi-Wan, it just, it looks amazing. It looks like there's a lot of variety, a lot of opportunity to play a lot of the great characters in the Star Wars saga, so that was an immediate thing that jumped out at me, because it's pretty hard to just grab. I mean, there were so many individual screenshots in this thing that look stunning. Josh is number five, the graphics. The graphics look excellent, very lifelike. They do. Pretty similar to what I just said from my number five. They look very lifelike, very interesting, and look like a ton of fun. Nicholas says, Carrie Fisher used to say that if life isn't funny, it is only real. I like that quote, Nicholas. Star Wars is always fun, despite its sometimes serious themes, and a Lego game looks like pure fun. It definitely does. Good good one. Good use of that Carrie Fisher quote, too. Blake says, the voice acting, having real voice actors this time around, will add a lot to the gameplay. Yes, it will. It's going to add a lot to the kind of the, the feeling, the aesthetic of it, for sure. Jamie's number five, the Ewok somersaults, right? Wasn't that adorable? I got a big kick out of that as well. It actually looked like 
it will be fun to play an Ewok. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, I what can I say? In an action adventure game, uh, this one looks like it's more compelling to play with the Ewoks as opposed to them just being silly. Brian's over five. Lots of humor. Leia trading hair. Porks dressing as Luke. <laughs> yes, I, I didn't catch that one. That's hilarious. The Porks dressing as Luke. Bravo for pointing that out. It looks like it's going to be very fun and funny. And I would expect nothing less because that's what Star Wars and Lego do so well together, which is a great time. Number five for Mason. Speaking of humor and funny things, Mason's number five is when Ray and Luke are having their lesson on Ashto. And Ray stretching out with the force and also Chewie peeks up and so she pets his head and Mason has that for number five. And that's a really, really funny one. One of the funnier moments, I think, in this particular trailer itself. Ben's number five, huge uh, goober fish. We're literally going everywhere in this game. Wasn't it huge? It looked cool. Like it looked kind of fearsome, but fun video game fearsome. And I, I like that as well. That was almost that almost made my list, too. That's great. Uh, anybody else? I think I've got everybody for number five. Let's scroll through. If you have any number fives, uh, I'll give you a chance to weigh them in there now. Uh, the it was hard. This was a hard list for me. I had 15 written down. I had to keep scratching things off or changing how I wanted to rank things because there's a lot of gorgeous imagery in this. Seemingly, you know, let's be honest. When you know there's going to be a new Jedi Fallen Order versus a new Lego game, they're both fun, but. One feels a little bit more serious and heavy, and Lego one is just light and silly, but still fun, naturally. Otherwise, we wouldn't keep playing them. But this one just kind of took it to another level for me, I think. So, let's just go ahead and jump into number four. Number four for me is... Oh, uh, let's get James. James is number five, the same as mine. The gameplay and the graphics are amazing. Indeed, they are, my friend. Good to have you back on the show. Number four for me, it was almost like... Drawing names out of a hat, I you know I didn't know what I was going to pick, but when that X-wing lands, it looks like almost in a in Moss Eisley spaceport or Moss Espa spaceport. I just really got a kick out of that, followed by Luke on that um, do back, and I thought, well, this looks great. That was when I really started to open my mind to this is going to be a lot of fun, and it looks really compelling. And I mean, it still looks like Lego. Don't get me wrong, but it just looks a little bit more like they've kicked everything up a notch. And it just, the X-Wing landing just gave me kind of a movie feel. Number four for Mary Chewie popping up under Ray's hand when she was reaching out to the Force. Love it. That's Mason's number five, of course. Number four for Brian being able to uh, be Mace running through Coruscant. I hope, yes, and he's running towards Django Fett. I was wondering what Mason thought of that one. That was pretty interesting. Number four for Blake. Big space battles. There will even be random encounters with Star Destroyers you can battle and board. I know. It looks fun. Sometimes those can be challenging, but that looks really fun. Number four for Ben, the mall fight at the beginning at the gameplay looks like that for one of the best fights in the game. It's going to be a blast. Agreed. Agreed. And when I, so when I first saw this and I saw that opening sequence, I thought, well, this is going to be hard to pick because there's a lot of cool stuff here. Nicholas is number four, mimicking movie trailers. I love how the trailers mimics the style of the actual movie trailers, especially the famous text that's been used on episode one and nine. Yes. Great. Jamie has a great number four. Django Fett's seismic charge. Visually awesome, right? The sound, the visuals, whether it's in Lego or animation or the Mandalorian or, of course, in Attack of the Clones, that seismic charge is about as good as it gets. And it really is captured well in this Lego trailer. Number four for Mason is when Anakin, at the beginning, his little boy, he's holding that purple stuffed animal. Adorable. A cute little Easter egg. Mason got a big kick out of that one and made it to his number four. I like that as well. I was trying to look at that bear to figure out if I should know who that bear is or if it popped up in anything else. And feel free to let me know in the comments if you do. But either way, it was pretty adorable. Good stuff. Okay, let's see who else. Maybe I've got everybody else's weight in here. Let me know your number four or your number five if you haven't got a chance to weigh in just yet. Otherwise, we're just going to jump into number three. I mentioned the X-Wing and the, the do-back, the great imagery here. Here's some number fours. Josh, free play possibilities. Some of the best and craziest moments from LEGO games come from free play. Looks like there's going to be a lot of fun possibilities for fun free play. wonder if there will be a hub like there was in the original game where you could just walk around, blow stuff up, and go to specific levels. I wondered that too. I hope it's I hope it's a little bit varied just to kind of spice it up a little bit. Honestly, speaking of LEGO, my favorite Lucasfilm LEGO property game is the Indiana Jones LEGO game, the original with the first three movies. I love that game. I hope we get a new one of that. James, how can you explore the whole galaxy 
And I hope you get to explore the planet Coruscant, a planet which we don't get to see much in Star Wars games. That would be fun. We would have seen a lot of that in 1313, but of course that game never materialized, although it did show up a little bit in the last season of Clone Wars. But yes, that would be fun to be able to do that. All right, I mentioned Mason's number four. Uh, actually, no, I didn't mention Mason's number four. His number, I gave his number three. My mistake. His number four is the planet map. He is, Mason is an expert with the Lego games. And when you look it up, when he, when Luke is scrolling through and you see the maps and it shows you the names of different planets, and I think they're green and red, red meaning not explored yet, Mason got a big kick out of that at being understanding the technical sides of the Lego games and knowing what is in store for him as a player. So he liked that. That was his number four. Sorry, buddy. I flipped your three and four round, but I've corrected that. So number four for Mason is a really cool looking graphics and the idea of the planet map. And it's kind of an updated version of that as well. Okay, number three. Let's go into number three. Uh, ben says, Mason, the planet map might come up for me again later. Oh, cool. See, look at that. Great minds think alike, don't they? My number three is a Tauntaun and Solo. If there's something Hoth related, I'm in. If it's Tauntaun and Han Solo or Luke related, yeah, I'm really in. So seeing Han right around on that Tauntaun, there was like some big cable that was going above him. And then there was the ad ad, I think, in the distance. It looks look great. Another example of the great compelling scenery and visuals that we're going to get to enjoy from this. And there's always something special, no matter how many times we do it, or how many times we play with the figures or, or with our family and friends or video games. Playing in that world, and especially in the original trilogy, for me anyway, is just great stuff. Number three for Brian. Luke uses his lightsaber to deflect Palpatine's lightning. Finally, right? I know, that was awesome. That was pretty early on in the trailer, too. Josh is number three, The Last Jedi. I love The Last Jedi and can't wait to play it in Lego form. I know, and I hadn't thought about the fact that we haven't played The Last Jedi or The Rise of Skywalker in Lego. We did play The Force Awakens, and actually Harrison Ford loaned his voice to that game, and that was fun. But to see the new levels and new things they're going to do with it in this one is going to be great. Blake, number three, it showed off more of the lightsaber blaster combat. It's going to be more in-depth than any other Lego game. I agree with that, and I wonder if we'll get to play online as well. Mary's number three, the Django Seismic Charge. So cool. Definitely cool. Nicholas, number three, voice actors. The voice acting sounds very good, with the actors not merely doing imitations, but really adding something both familiar yet unique to the characters. And some of it sounded like it was from the movies. Some of it sounded like the original actors. And some of it just sounded like darn fine acting. But it sounded really good all the way around. Jamie's number three is similar to mine. Anything and everything from Hoth. The Tauntaun scene especially. Never easy to replicate a snowstorm. No, it isn't. Especially in this. And it certainly looks very, very promising, I would say. I can't wait for that board. Ben's number three. Ray reaches out to Pet Chewy. As mentioned, already Lego and their humor in all their games is an A+. plus, Very creative. Yay. Awesome. I love that one. Number three for James. Luke riding the dewback. Yes, that was super cool. It followed... I mentioned that in my number four because I just like how they bridge those two moments together. I thought that was great. Again, Mason's number three was Anakin with a stuffed animal. It was like a little purple or blue teddy bear. I think it was purple. Adorable. Really, really fun. Those Easter eggs are a great part of these Lego games. Number three for Ross, the inclusion of so many characters, so many characters, and so many seemingly that we're going to get to play with and actually use in the game itself. I love it. I'm here for it. Mason and I are going to be arm wrestling to see who gets to play what boards when. I'm sure it's going to be fun. <laughs> really fun to watch. Maybe we can play. It'll be two player, hopefully, May. So that would be really cool. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into number two. I mentioned Mason's number three. So we're going to go and jump into number two. Number two for me is the Revenge of the Sith Obi Wan slash Dooku. It's again very much at the beginning, but we see the Emperor on his throne, and then Obi-Wan and Dooku, the fighting, uh, the using the lightsaber to, bl to block lightning. It just it just looked cool. Like, if you can take that epic scope of Revenge of the Sith and put it into a Lego game, which, again, should be cute and uh, possibly non-threatening, but this really, as I've been mentioning, has raised the cost, has raised the wow factor, has raised the excitement level, as is befitting of Star Wars. So I thought that was great. Number two for Mary. Luke and 3PO looking at the pictures on Ben's wall. Then Ben's reaction when Luke asks what really happened to his father. Yes, that one is good. 
Mary, that's going to come up later on on a Zare list for sure. Number two for Brian. Geonosis, I can't wait to ignite a lightsaber and beat up more clankers. I could do that for hours on end, right? And I think we'll get a chance to do that. Hopefully we will. That'll be a ton of fun to do. Number two for Nicholas, franchise inclusion. It is great that the game includes all three trilogies, which means that all kinds of fans will have characters, vehicles, and locations that they can enjoy. Yes, a lot of that. A lot of different characters to be able to use, which is amazing. Blake's number two, like what Ross said, seeing all the characters you can use, from what I've heard, it's going to be 200 or more playable characters you can use whenever. I guess that's very possible. I'm very excited to see that as well, Blake. Number two for Jamie, Lay in the opening scene from A New Hope brought me back to May 1977. I was really moved by that. I just thought it was cool, her from a distance with her blaster and stormtroopers running in, you know, Tan of four. I just thought that was cool, and it kind of excited me more than I expected, but it just looked fun. Again, it, it's nice to see you can use, of course I like using characters with lightsabers, obviously, but you can use non-lightsaber characters, and it's still the same kind of fun, but in a different way, and that, again... I'm a broken record, so I probably should have purchased a thesaurus before this show tonight, apparently. But if you can take a Lego game and make it seem like it's got a little more cost and thrill and scope because it's Lego and it's Star Wars, it just seems like it's going to take it to a different place. Number two for Ross. Seeing Qui-Gon in action again, one of my favorite characters was gone too soon. Yes, I love Qui-Gon. Terry says, man, we now can finally get Darth Jar Jar. No, I hope not. <laughs> Josh, Lego Charm, what can I say? I'm a huge Lego fan and Star Wars fan, and they're an excellent combo. I love the charm that Lego inserts into all their specials, shows, and, of course, video games. Me too. Me too. Brian's moved on to number one. So before we get to that, I'm going to give Mason's number two, which is Nintendo Switch, and he put up a bunch of exclamation points because this is out for PS4, PS5, the Xbox, naturally, different versions of that. But the Nintendo Switch is certainly a game system that is a big hit in his air household and mason is just can completely convinced that nintendo switch for this game is going to be the way to go so he put nintendo switch for his number two number two for ben the map told you it would be back i love the open world feel of force awakens and do that on crate canto bite kef beer it'll be great it'll be really great so many to choose from and hopefully they'll have like world you can unlock it'd be great to go to bad two personally i think that'd be awesome let's go ahead and jump in number one Number one for our top five modes from the Star Wars Complete Saga video game trailer. For me, it's the tone. I've been talking about this on almost every one of mine. But it looks like a serious game. Yes, it's Lego. Yes, it's going to be silly. Yes, it'll have Easter eggs. Yes, they look like little minifigures. But it looks like it's taking the franchise, the gravity of the franchise, and it's trans transferring it, translating it even, if you will, to the game itself. So I'm very excited. I didn't expect to see something somewhat serious that is Lego related, but still capture the fun of Star Wars, which is what Star Wars should be. And I feel like that's all over this trailer, which is why it made it to my number one. Let's see. Number one for Brian. Free play. I can't wait to take Jedi Knight Luke through the prequels or Anakin and X-Wing to blow up the Death Star. Well, that's a fun idea. By the way, I know I've said it before, but I love your Facebook ID picture. That's great stuff. That is great. Ross is seeing Ray climb above Maz Kanata's castle. I want to know all about the history and backstories of that cantina over the years. I do too. Mary's number one. Luke igniting the lightsaber into the ground. Ben and Yoda's reaction. So Lego. Yes, that little ending sequence on the trailer is funny. Number one for Blake. The open worlds. They are building this game with a new engine. It's going to give us an exploration that we've never seen before with Lego. Maybe that's what I keep talking about, but I wasn't able to articulate. So thank you, Blake, for explaining that. The new engine definitely shows to me. Nicholas. Aesthetic style, despite the game being about Lego versions of the characters, the lighting and textures are amazingly realistic. Exactly. That was said so much better than what I've been babbling about throughout the entire show tonight. Exactly, Nicholas. Mary says, definitely, to Ross, definitely my top honorable mention. I watched that section a number of times. Cool. Andrew had to duck out for a bit, but number one is that we got a release date, so I just hope this one sticks. I do, too. It was just the third one we've had. So I hope we get that one too. Ben's, Ben's on one. Ray jumping over Kylo Ren's ship at the end. They show the same image as the first time. But it looks like they made it much better than the first trailer. If this is what another year of work gets us, I can be patient. Exactly. It's going to be worth the wait. Definitely going to be worth the wait. 
Jamie's number one, the backgrounds and the movement through them. A few of the scenes so show... Ooh, that's a tongue twister. A few of the scenes show ships and other main areas of focus rotating, but you see the background rotate so great. Yeah, maybe it's that engine that, that Blake was talking about. It looks fantastic. Josh is number one, the action. The action looks very advanced. I remember in the old game, as fun as it was, you would just spam the attack button and beat people with your lightsaber or randomly fire a blaster hoping you hit something. This new game looks like the action is going to be very good and enjoyable. I agree with that. Number one for Mason is one that Mary mentioned a little bit ago. Number one for Mason is when Luke says, how did my father die? And Obi-Wan's like, uh, uh. Mason did the impression of that a couple of times for me and my wife and got a kick out of that. It was funny in the trailer. Even better when Mason acted it out. So that was definitely his number one. How did my father die? And Obi-Wan's like, uh, well. And we made up our own little versions of what Obi-Wan might have said in that particular situation. Very good. Anybody else have any that they want to weigh in? I want to make sure I'm going to go through the comments, make sure I didn't skip anybody. I love the comments. I love how interactive Facebook Live is. I love that you're sharing the show when it's live, sharing the advertisements, tagging your friends, bringing them into the program. That is what it's all about. The more people we have on Facebook Live and the CWK Cafe, our Facebook group, following us everywhere, is the more people we can have to be part of this amazing Star Wars community and conversation that I absolutely love. I absolutely love being a part of this. And the more people can bring into our family, the better. So thank you again for doing that. Speaking of family, let's look at next week's top five. Next week's top five is top five Bad Batch members. We took a break from the Bad Batch for a couple of weeks. Talk about different trailers, this, both this Lego trailer and Star Wars Visions. But now we're going to do the top five Bad Batch members. And if, if I'm counting correctly, there are six of them. So somebody's going to end up in the honorable mention list. It's going to be fun to see how you rank your top five favorite members of the Bad Batch. Terry says, I hope as much of the music is featured in the trailers as in the game. I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. I absolutely adore this music. I wish it was on an actual soundtrack itself. I believe it's the music from the Force Awakens trailer, but it's going to be awesome. Uh, Minta can't wait. Awesome. And Blake says it's going to be a fun discussion. I'm looking forward to it as well. And Josh has already ruined his number one <laughs> by telling us what it is. Just kidding. But he says it's going to be gonky. So there you go. Very, very fun. All right. Well, so let's go ahead and jump into Ask Dan Z. We're really moving through things pretty quickly tonight, which is great. Ask Dan Z. All right. So this is where you can ask me anything you want to about Star Wars, about coffee with Kenobi. Oh, thank you, Mary. The broccoli story. So last, last this week on Coffee with Kenobi, we did our nostalgia show with Clayton and John. I said, hey, remind me at the end to talk about Star Wars and broccoli. And I never did bring it up. So <laughs> uh, when I was, let's see. I was probably, let me think, I was probably seven or eight years old. The Empire Strikes Back was out in theaters. I'd already seen it plenty of times. And I, of course, loved it. I wanted to see it again and again, even wearing the shirt tonight. And so my mom made dinner, and she made broccoli, which, by the way, I actually love now, but when I was a kid, I didn't. And my mom said, now you sit here at the table, and we're not going to go see the movie until you eat all your broccoli. So I grabbed the broccoli put it in my mouth, swallowed it. All right. And I said, okay. And she goes, okay, go to the bathroom. I'm going to go to the movie. So I went to the bathroom, spit the broccoli out, flush it down the toilet, and I went and saw the movie. Now, I am not proud of that. That is is dishonest. Um, I apologize, Mom. That was dishonest. It's probably the most dishonest thing I've ever done. But I did get to see the movie, and I didn't like broccoli. Now, kids, your taste buds change, what, every five days? Is that right, Mason? So, I since love broccoli. I told mom, I said I was sorry. Boom. There is the broccoli story for you. Uh, Nick wants to know what it was like to make the Target commercial. That was actually incredible fun. If you go through the Coffee with Kenobi feed, the podcast feed, there's an entire episode dedicated to the making of that, what it was like for Deanna and I to fly to Los Angeles to film that commercial. And I got to sit down and talk with the other members of the commercial. Boy, we had a fun time. Thank you for bringing that up. Last week was a five-year anniversary 
of the debut of that Target commercial. And it was definitely something that changed my life, which is a great, great experience. So, Nicholas, I highly recommend that you check that out as far as the podcast where I talked about it. Uh, Brian, have you seen Shang-Chi? I did. Mason and I saw it earlier today, and we loved it. I'm sure we'll talk about it on a future CWK program, but we absolutely loved it. Brian, what did you think of it? Mean to one someone, I thought my thoughts on the latest What If episode. Well, on speaking of pour over, mean to a good wedding present, you should ask to be a member of the CWK Alliance. We talk all about it, but I will say that was very dark and very depressing. Beautifully made. Benedict Cumberbatch is as good as it gets, but it was is really, ugh, really depressing. That's what I thought. What did you think? Mary is laughing and encouraging me because of my broccoli story. Yep. I remember visibly. I remember putting it in my mouth and then going to the bathroom and putting it in the toilet paper. I just remember like, ugh. And, but I had to see, I had to go see it. <laughs> so I did. Josh, I wonder if you can go to Batu and Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. I hope so. That'd be great. I would love to explore Batu as a as Lego minifigure. Heck, I'd love to go back to Batu period no matter what. That would be super, super fun to be able to do. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Any other questions that anybody has for us? These are really great. Keep them coming while you're thinking about that. Again, coming out, uh, well, gosh, it's coming out in November. November 2nd, the Star Wars Character Encyclopedia, of my second book that I was able to write for Disney and Lucasfilm from DK Publishing, the Star Wars Character Encyclopedia, the updated and expanded edition. And you're in for some fun. You're in for some fun surprises. I had a wonderful time working on it with these incredible individuals and can't wait to share more about it as we get a little bit closer. Uh, ben says Shang-Chi's Best Marvel origin story. Wow. You know what? I did love it. I really like Caps a lot, so that might be hard for me, but I really like it. Uh, Brian thought Chang chi was fantastic. I did too. It was one of my favorite Marvel flicks. Blake says, do you think Visions will bring more attention to Star Wars given the anime industry is a multi-billion dollar industry? I do. I do. I think it's going to be an interesting game changer. It's going to bring even more people into the franchise. Uh, Mason agreed he loved Shang chi and he did love it, and he showed me some of his Kung Fu and gymnastics moves after the show. He's pretty good. He might have a little bit of the the Ten Rings uh, hiding somewhere up his sleeves for all I know. Good. Good stuff. Yeah, I highly recommend Shang-Chi if I think people are going to love it. Well, speaking of love it, I love chatting with each of you every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Don't forget that next week you're going to get a chance to list your top five favorite members of The Bad Batch. It's going to be fun to narrow it down. I'm looking forward to the discussion and to how you're going to narrow down your thoughts and how you're going to rank them. It's going to be tricky. Somebody's going to get left out, but it's going to be fun to see how you come up with the places. Good night, my CWK family. You all rock. Blake, thanks, buddy. It looks like the Marlins had a great weekend with the, the bullpen and lots of great stuff. Speaking of great stuff this week, uh, again, we're talking about Star Wars and nostalgia, and we're going to talk about the top five favorite moments from the rising Storm, written by Kevin Scott, and it's going to be spoiler-free, so no worries if you haven't read it yet. Also this week on Porver, What If Episodes 3 and 4, we've got the episode where What If the Avengers Never Got Together, as well as what happens if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands. A lot of fun with that. Next week's Porver is going to be interesting, too. We're going to talk about our top five least favorite movies, in which I can complain about movies that really drive me crazy. And it was pretty fun to do. Andrew says the mask of Zorro is tons of fun. Interesting. Well, that might come up. Terry says good night, everyone. Nicholas, thank you. Mary, have a great week. Mean to may the force be with you. Good luck with the wedding planning. Josh says speaking of superhero films, have you ever seen the mask of Zorro? I love the mask of Zorro. I think it's a great movie. I'm gonna show it to Mason someday for sure. All right, everybody. See you next week again. Be sure to bring a friend, tag him, let him know you're watching the show. Follow us on. Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, happy kickoff week. That's right. The NFL is starting up. Hopefully this will be a fun year as a Bears fan. Ross, I don't think the Bears play the Colts this year, do they? I don't know. I'm sure we'll be chatting about it and I'll be chatting about you, Star Wars, all the time in, in our Facebook group, the CWK Cafe. Let me get that logo up for you so you can see that one in case you're not familiar with the CWK Cafe. And also, we're going to be sure to chat with you in the CWK Alliance, which is our exclusive group where you can support me and Coffee with Kenobi 
and watch us our video version of CWK Pour Over as well as CWK Pour Over itself. Thank you so much, everybody. May the force be with you. And remember, this is the podcast you're looking for. See you next time, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here.